BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $373. Antiwar.com reports, though the ceasefire that brought the eastern Ukraine war to a halt is holding across 90% of the country, the rebel capital of Donetsk continues to be a flashpoint, with the military continuing to shell rebel-held residential neighborhoods and rebels still trying to take the airport. The latest push on the airport began yesterday morning and was the second time this week they tried to advance. The Ukraine military denied reports that large parts of the airport had fallen and insisted they re retained it. Meanwhile, the shelling of residential neighborhoods, which left 10 dead the day before, continued through the night, killing a Swiss Red Cross worker outside the organization's Donetsk office. Ukraine denied the shelling that hit the Red Cross worker, even though it was against rebel-held territory. The Red Cross issued a statement warning indiscriminate shelling of residential areas violates international law. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. The Associated Press reports, Hong Kong's embattled leaders refused demands by pro-democracy demonstrators to resign on Thursday and instead offered talks to defuse a week of massive demonstrations that have gone into the biggest challenge to Beijing's authority since China took control of the former British colony in 1997. The Hong Kong Federation of Students said in a statement early Friday that they plan to join the talks with the government focused specifically on political reforms. They reiterated that Chief Executive Long Chong Ying should step down, saying he has lost his integrity. A wider pro-democracy group that had joined the demonstrations, Occupy Central, welcomed the talks and also insisted that the leader step down. Occupy Central said in a statement it, quote, hopes the talks can provide a turning point in the current political stalemate. However, we reiterate our view that Chief Executive Long Chun Ying is the one responsible for the stalemate and he must step down, end quote. The students had threatened to surround or occupy government buildings if he did not step down, and police had warned of serious consequences if protesters carried out that threat. The protesters want Beijing to reverse its decision that all candidates in the inaugural 2017 elections for chief executive be approved by a committee of mostly pro-Beijing elites. They say China is reneging on its promise that the city's top leader will be chosen through universal suffrage. You can support FPP Radio by shopping online. Whether you're looking for t-shirts, precious metals, bitcoins, or books, you'll find that and more at shop.fppradio.com. Every purchase you make from one of my affiliates at shop.fppradio.com helps fund FPP Radio. That's shop.fppradio.com. Reuters reports a federal appeals court ruled on Thursday that Texas could begin enforcing restrictions on abortion clinics that critics of the new law say will force all but seven of the facilities in the state to shut down. A panel of the 5th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals in New Orleans ruled that Texas could enforce the requirement that clinics have certain hospital-like settings for surgeries while the court weighs the constitutionality of the 2013 law. A lower court in August ruled that the ambulatory surgical center requirement was unconstitutional, finding it placed an undue burden on women seeking abortions. Texas officials appealed that ruling. Abortion rights advocates who have argued that the requirement will leave approximately 1 million Texas women who are of reproductive age at least 150 miles from an abortion clinic and were critical of the ruling. Supporters of the law, who say the rules will reduce complications and improve patient care, applauded the ruling. Under the rules, Texas clinics will have to meet a set of building standards ranging from widening halls to having facilities for certain surgeries that abortion rights advocates say are unnecessary, especially when an abortion is medically induced. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com.
Shortly after beginning his first date with area woman Pauline Geary, smitten local man Brad Holtman told Onion reporters he couldn't believe that the woman was also a fan of the 1960s British rock band, The Beatles. We were just talking about music and she mentioned that she liked The Beatles, which is crazy because I love the Beatles, actually. Yeah, funny thing is, I was not really even looking forward to the date. Uh, yeah, I figured we get a drink or whatever, but it's turning out a lot cooler than I thought it was going to. I mean, she's just such a huge fan. She knows all the Beatles' names. She even owns some of their albums. I've been a Beatles fan since like sixth or seventh grade, so I don't want to get too excited and jump into something. So I think I'm going to ask her if she's ever seen The Godfather which is probably my top five movies of all time. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, 855-450 free. That's 855-450-3733. Ian is in Orlando having fun at the Coins in the Kingdom Bitcoin event. He will be back Monday night. But Mark and Ian will be on the show tomorrow night broadcasting live from the Disney Resort down there in Orlando. In studio tonight, it's Daryl. And Ellen. And we have... A lot of very interesting stories that we have brought in tonight. As we always do. Ellen, you're going to, at some point, tell us about the morality of artificial intelligence. We might also find out why Russians are turning in their Western-themed T-shirts and I also have a couple of stories, and we're actually going to kick off the night with a story out of Arizona, because there's something very interesting going on. There was a law that was passed that is called the Nude Images Law, that the way they have it written is overly broad. The intent was to target what they call revenge porn. And the Freedom to Read Foundation describes revenge porn. And let me find it real quick. In well, you know the, what they say about intent. Like, it doesn't matter what the intention is. Like, what are, what are the actual consequences? Right. So if you violate this law in Arizona, you get convicted of a felony. And in some cases, you must register as a sex offender. So revenge porn, as defined by the Freedom to Read Foundation, is the malicious online posting of explicit photos by aggrieved ex-lovers. Wait, However, so it's only grieved ex-lovers? What if what if you're just a, uh, a content ex-lover? Like, you have nothing against the other person? You're just, you know... Quietly existing in a separate life. And you're posting nude images of your spouse online? Yeah, well, yeah, nothing better to do. Way to make money. that's not revenge porn. Exactly. Uh, and if you're in a content relationship, then one would This is would what think... happens when you base actions on intention. Right, but if you're in a, you know, a happy or a content relationship, then one would think that you have the permission of your spouse you can't assume that what if they never verbalize the permission what if it's just assumed like you assume that it's okay to post it whereas the other person's assuming that you'll have enough respect for their privacy to not post it right then so what happens that, that comes down to well you agreed to be in the photo so therefore you agreed for me to do whatever i want with the photo that that's you know one line of thinking but the way they have the law written in Arizona is in such an overly broad way that the ACLU asks the following question. Which of the following could land you a felony conviction in Arizona? And there's four choices here. 
showing images of naked prisoners being tortured at Abu Ghraib. Oh, yeah. Total felony. Well, you you remember the photos that I'm talking about, right? Where they, back in, what was it, 2004, 2005. The pile of naked bodies. Right. They had the pile of naked prisoners in the Abu Ghraib prison in Iraq. There were other things to where female uh, military people that were acting as prison guards were standing next to naked inmates pointing and laughing at their genitalia. Uh, was there one w- where a man was blindfolded and he, he had a pantsless? hood on his head and he had his arms outstretched with what he thought were wires attached to something, but it was just a wire that dangled and wasn't attached to anything. Yeah, they're very horrific. Um, right. I don't even like thinking about it just because it's such a, a terrible right. scene so that, to relive. That's option number one. Option number two on which of these could land you a felony in Arizona or a possible felony conviction in Arizona is posting a link to the iconic Pulitzer Prize winning photograph of Napalm Girl that showed an unclothed Vietnamese girl running away from a napalm attack during the Vietnamese conflict. Option number three is sharing a close-up photo of a woman breastfeeding to your breastfeeding support group and option number four is showing a friend a cute naked baby photo so which of those four do you think would get you a felony in arizona all of them i mean how could you show your best friend an adorable picture of your newborn child in the bathtub that's just sick like what is wrong with you you are clearly violating that baby's rights I mean, and and the picture of of the person running away from napalm, I you know I can't believe that you would post such a, a a photo that is so intimate that this person is running for their life in their everyday garb. I'm assuming I don't know if they're nude all the time. You know, some people are. I not not everybody that lives. You know, not everybody that lives nude day to day is a nudist. You know, there's some right, people that right. live in other countries where it's just accepted, but here. We do not accept nudity. So that that is just disgusting. Ellen, you're right that unfortunately the answer is all of the above could possibly get you a felony conviction in Arizona. And as the ACLU writes, that's because Arizona recently passed a law that makes it a felony and potentially a sex offense to share any image of nudity or sexuality before you can before you get consent from every person pictured. And the ACLU, they're a big privacy rights advocate, but they also stand up for free speech. That's going to be pretty hard to do if you're working for some company like uh, Girls Gone Wild. Like, what, what if what, what if what you're making you a poster? Like, what if you're making a poster of, like, one of the scenes and there's, like, ten people in that photo and you just met them on, like, Mardi Gras or something? How are you, are you going to go back to New Orleans and search every hotel room and dirty bar trying to find these people getting their consent? Well, one, one would think, and of course, you know, I don't work for Girls Gone Wild, right. but one would think that they would have the consent forms on them. But, for instance, the Abu Ghraib situation, there's no consent that was gotten from the inmates that were pictured in. Well, there's no consent for them to be there in the first place. Like, do you, they wouldn't have agreed to go into the prison right. willingly. Like, that would just be insane. Right. So there, there are certain situations, such as the Abu Ghraib situation or the picture of Napalm Girl, to where it is near impossible to receive consent for a photo. And as we'll get in here, there's also situations in which it's unknown if consent was gotten because either the person that was photographed is dead, the photographer is dead, or nobody really knows who the photographer was or who is being pictured. Well, you can kind of tell by the context of the photo, like, is the person restrained? Are they conscious? You know, are they, do they look happy? Are they enjoying the experience? You can kind of pick up these context clues just by looking at the picture. You you can, but not in every situation. And let let me 
go a little further in the article here. Uh, The ACLU blog writes, protecting personal privacy is without a doubt a laudable goal. Indeed, the ACLU works tirelessly to protect your private data, but Arizona's nude photo law is a seriously misguided attempt to achieve that goal. This new crime is broad and confusing. It applies to anyone who shares a nude image, not just to the bad actors who intentionally invade another person's privacy. A prosecutor need not demonstrate that a person had an expectation of privacy in the image before charging you with a crime for sharing it. We will find out more about the nude image law in Arizona when we come back. And of course, your phone calls are welcome. 855 450 free. This is Free Talk Live. I'm Chuck Woolery. You know, I don't know about you, but I don't like taking pills for minor arthritis pain, and I really don't like those patches either. But I have found something that works Australian Dream. It's an arthritis pain relief cream. It's a great product. It doesn't smell or burn. It isn't greasy, and it works. And Australian Dream has an empty jar guarantee, so you can use a whole jar, and if you're not happy, you get your money back. But I doubt that you'll send it back. You know, the stuff really works. Get Australian Dream at Walgreens, CVS, or Walmart. You'll be glad you did. America was built by people with a few dollars and a dream. And while many don't know it, there's one path to success that still only requires a dream and about $10. That's right. If your dream is to start or grow your business, something as simple as the right business card could make all the difference. And today, at Vistaprint.com, you can get 500 full-color business cards for only $9.99. That's right. Only $9.99. Just go to Vistaprint.com and enter promo code 8989 at checkout. That's Vistaprint.com, promo code 8989. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book. And it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Keenvention is coming up October 31st through November 2nd. Get your tickets now at keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, attend social events like the costume party. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, James Robin Hood Cleveland, Rich Paul, and Free State Project President Carla Garrick will be keynoting. And we'll have all kinds of panels, including the new Cop Block panel and the new Movers panel hosted by the outlaw, Josie Wales. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenevention this October 31st through November 2nd. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. Reserve your tickets now at Keenevention.info. Visit Keenevention.info for more or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenevention.info. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Why does a U.S. orthodontist make more than some CEOs? You get that dental bill and you'll know. Implants, partial or full bridge, the kids need braces? Fractions of U.S. prices. Balloon angioplasty for heart patients in the U.S. is $50,000. Thailand, under $7,000. Heart bypass, joint and hip replacement, cancer, many procedures under the price of your Obamacare deductible and copay. Don't risk bankruptcy. Hit us up now. 
We'll show you how at asiarunlikehellguide.com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live, 855-450-3, that's 855-450-3733. Ian and Mark are in Orlando in studio tonight, it's Daryl. And Ellen. And we've been talking about this new law that is actually being challenged in Arizona. It's called the Nude Images Law. And the ACLU and the Freedom to Read Foundation and several other groups have filed a lawsuit because they say that the law goes too far. If you think that this doesn't go too far enough, I want to hear from you. 855-450-FREE. But before we get back to this article, there are bounties available right now at BitcoinBountyHunter.com. One is worth about 38 Bitcoin. That's somewhere in the neighborhood of $16,000 right now. You can use your investigative skills and collect the bounty. You can place your own bounty or add to the ones that are already there. And don't worry, the authorities are not going to solve these cases. It will be done by people like you and people that profit from their work and skill. Go to BitcoinBountyHunter.com. So the nude images law in Arizona, we've touched on a little bit to where basically it criminalizes sharing any image of someone who is nude without having their consent. And as we mentioned, that includes showing pictures of tortured inmates from Abu Ghraib, showing or even posting a link. You don't even have to have an actual copy of the image. All you have to do is post a link to the image of Napalm Girl, and that could possibly get you a felony in Arizona. The law, as the ACLU reports, the law applies equally to private persons, hacked photos, and a beautiful nude at a photo exhibit because the law's breadth encompasses truly newsworthy, artistic, and historical images. As a result, the nude photo law creates bizarre and troubling burdens on speech that are fully protected by the First Amendment. For proof that this law goes way too far and criminalizes innocent and valuable speech, you need to look no further than the large group of bookstores, newspapers, photographers, publishers, and librarians that have challenged the law together. Many of them belong to the First Amendment group Media Coalition, whose members include the Plaintiff Association of Publishers, Librarians, and Booksellers, represented by the ACLU and Denton's US LLP. The plaintiffs just want to be able to offer books, art, news, and history without risking a criminal conviction in Arizona. And that doesn't seem like too much to ask. No, it doesn't. And I find it kind of ridiculous that they're restricting so much activity. Do you real like the scope of this law if it were completely enforced? I I'm certain that it would shut down, you know, not only um like many photographers, but also, you know, any, you know, book that has a photograph in it that, you know, the person in it might be long gone or um you know, more than that, like movies and I know that this isn't completely new. Uh, there was a photographer that actually went through a lot of... Um, that There have been a lot of photographers that have gone through 
you know, yeah, so, I'm just sort thinking of like of... child porn sort of allegations, right? And because s- they had taken pictures of their newborn baby or their infant or their toddler, right? And the photographer I'm thinking of in specific is Sally Mann, and um, she had a large exhibit that uh, she presented in 1988, and it basically had tons of pictures in it of uh, her children who were you know, like four to seven years old. And, you know, they they would just naturally walk around the household, sometimes not wearing clothes like little kids do. And she was accused of posting child pornography. And if you look at her pictures, like, they're very artistic. There's nothing weird or sexual about them. They're just kids being kids. Like, the perfect tomato is a really good one. It shows one of her daughters walking tiptoe across a table. Of course, she's not wearing clothes, but there's like two tomatoes down by her feet and her other sister sitting at the table. And it just reminds you of like a relaxing summer day and there's some nice tomatoes on the table. Like, it's there's nothing wrong with it. And yet this is the cause of so much controversy. Like, oh, how could those children consent to this? They're not old enough. Right. Like, clearly you're you're taking advantage of them. And that doesn't seem to be the case at all. Like, these children look pretty happy in the photos. They're minding their own business. Well, uh, aside from that sort of thing, National Geographic could wind up being removed from every bookstore and library in Arizona. Because they take pictures of Africans, right? Yes. And we don't know if they've consented. We don't even know if they were able to communicate with the people to wind up telling them what a camera is. Okay, well, you have to assume that they communicated somehow because, like, if if a white person right. with a magical picture box just you, shows up and starts taking photos, they're going to freak out a you, little bit. You have to assume that there was some form of communication, but we don't know if there were signed consent forms. So, therefore, libraries and bookstores would have to wind up going through every magazine that comes into their store, every newspaper that comes in, every book. And that would just be a huge burden on them. Yeah, and you know, this whole thing's just bogus. Like, there's so many porn pictures out there. Why does, like, one hold more importance over another? And the, like these pictures are going to be spread no matter what law you pass. And the way the law in Arizona is written, if there's a book in your bookstore or in your library that winds up, you know, somehow violating this overly broad law, then you don't get charged once for having this book. You get charged once for each copy of the book. Or the magazine, or the newspaper. So I bet every Barnes and Noble, every used bookstore, basically every bookstore that's out there that's still clinging on somehow is going to be shut down and charged with at least 500 felony counts. Probably the ACLU blog, and that there's a uh, Q and A or a frequently asked questions that is linked to from one of these two articles that I'm flipping between, and. One of them, let let me just read you question seven and the answer. I'll read the question now. I'll read the answer when we come back. What can bookstores and librarians do to comply with the law? And it explains what they can do to comply with this overly broad law. And we'll explain why the law is overly broad when we come back on Free Talk Live. You can call in 855-450-FREE. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. You know it's coming. The signs that you're starting to age, the wrinkles that weren't there before, those sudden lines. But what if you could hold back those signs for years to come? That can happen with a proprietary new anti-aging complex that reinvents looking younger. 
It's like a delete button for your wrinkles. Our philosophy is simple. No wrinkles allowed. Call 1-844-500-0815. That's 1-844-500-0815. Or go to NoWrinklesAllowed.com. Andrew Michael Jones is a liberty-loving activist and participant in the Free State Project. He's also been accused of being one of the administrators of the infamous Silk Road Anonymous Black Marketplace. Andrew is facing a federal trial for multiple crimes with no victim. Whether or not he's the Silk Road administrator named Inigo, he has not been accused of harming anyone. In fact, the Silk Road is actually an amazing advancement that has reduced the overall harm of the black market to both customers and drug sellers. Whether or not he did it, Andrew, like alleged Silk Road founder Ross Ulbricht deserves the support of people who love liberty. Visit DrewsDefense.org to learn more and contribute to his defense. You can donate via PayPal or in Bitcoin, as I did. That's DrewsDefense.org. Drew's family does not have much, and his parents have put up their home and both retirement incomes to secure a $1 million bond on Andrew. He's currently on 24-7 house arrest and is prohibited from touching any device that could connect to the Internet. Please contribute to his defense fund via DrewsDefense.org. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. We have a breaking news blast on the tragic situation happening across the country in which more than 40,000 Americans have been trapped in a Confessions Animal Hoarding Marathon on Animal Planet for the last 13 hours. The Animal Hoarders Marathon began at 9 this morning as victims were preparing for a full day before hearing the fateful sound of the show's opening credits. Almost instantly, thousands were pinned to their couches by a story of a heavyset homosexual living with his partner, his toothless sister, and 31 chihuahuas. Rescue workers rushed to free as many victims as they could. The rope's secure? Rope's secure. We're going to get you out of here. Just hold on a second, ma'am. Wait, I think the next one is about monkeys. Ready? Ready. Pull! No, no, wait, wait. Can I just see what happens with the feral cat? In other parts of the country, rescue workers enlisted volunteers who had already seen the episodes to spoil them for the victims. Oh, yeah, this one. This is about the lady living with the dogs in the trailer. She doesn't even get evicted in the end. This is the Onion News Network. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can call in and take control of the airwaves, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. That is the Pro XPN toll-free call-in line. And in studio tonight, it's Daryl. And Ellen. And we've been talking about the nude images law in Arizona and and just before the break, you were saying like, oh, this is they're going to give you instructions on how you can follow the law. Well, I imagine they have little uh, illustrations and like a list one, two and three. This is how you can do it. Kind of like on the changing stations in the bathroom. Like this is how you use the changing station. Well, if it were the government in Arizona that were putting out the this is how you comply, they would probably dumb it down like that. Well, they, wa- they want to make is, it so that everybody can understand, and it's fun to do. Th- this answer is from the Media Coalition, which is a large organization of booksellers, librarians, publishers, journalists, and the like. 
And they explain the threat of going to prison means every bookstore and librarian is responsible for every book, magazine, newspaper, and video that they carry. Hey, I don't choose what books are in here. I'm just the librarian. I just sort them. I use the Dewey Decimal System. You're still responsible. So to follow the law, you, you, Ellen, you as a librarian. I'm a librarian. In this this scenario, you are. You need to personally look at every picture in every book and every magazine that you have in your library. Yep, I'll get started on that. Which, that would be a near impossible task. It would be totally impossible. It would take years. I don't even think I could do it in one lifetime. You would also have to determine whether each picture violates the law without knowing the circumstances surrounding each photograph. Many booksellers and librarians will decline to carry certain material that includes nude images rather than run the risk of prosecution, even though they have a constitutional right to sell the material. The law also affects their customers and patrons Because if booksellers and librarians are forced to remove any material that contains a nude photo, then customers and patrons are deprived of their right to purchase that material. That means that you would no longer be able to purchase an issue of National Geographic at your bookstore, pick it up from the library, etc., and you won't be able to borrow art books that include nude images from the library. Let's see how many felonies we can get out of one magazine let's say so the person let's say there's like a a general manager for a bookstore who purchases a certain magazine that has a naked person that's one felony so the person who runs the counter they're also a felon because they're selling it the person who buys it are they a felon as well even Uh, though they might not know that the picture's in there presumably and how many copies of this magazine are in said bookstore, Ellen? Oh, I don't know. I'm just assuming... Because it's a felony for each copy of the magazine <laughs> that the bookstore has. But I'm just saying, like, out of one copy, you can get at All least right. three. All right, you could nab three, maybe four people mm-hmm. for, you know, one Oh, and whoever manufactured thing. it, too. Very, very likely. Uh, the ACLU article says that proponents of the law indicate that this was intended to address the harms of revenge porn, and they define that, the ACLU does, as a digital phenomenon typified by a scorned lover who maliciously posts private images of an ex online, often alongside personal details. Wait, so a phenomena is kind of like the Aurora Borealis. It just kind of happens. A, a digital phenomena? I, I don't think that, that porn just happens. Like, this isn't, you know, this isn't something that you can just wave your magic law wand and be like, go away now. People are going to do this regardless. Like, there's absolutely no way that you can stop nudity. It's totally natural, and everybody wants to see it. Right, but and th- they're not trying to stop all nudity. They're no, only they're trying just... to stop certain types of nudity, and they've done so with an overly broad brush when what they really need to do is like you know touch up two or three spots, right? But how, like, how are they to determine what revenge porn is? Who are who are they to be the judges of that? Well, they have to judge something. So here in Arizona, or I shouldn't say here because we're in New Hampshire, but out in Arizona, they're just trying to say every porn is long. You know, if we don't know the Level of consent that was given, illegal felony. Oh, and they're so noble, aren't they? Look at them. The knight in shining armor saving every poor woman and child from being taken advantage of. Not by... just women and children. There are men. Oh, and men as well. I'm that so... have naked pictures. of The prisoners at Abu Ghraib. Those were men. There's, there's one example. Can you give me another I probably could if I feel you like, give me a second. I feel like male porn is... Definitely not as prominent as female. This is just me guessing my individual perception. I don't know. I'm- so the the article here, or actually it's a blog post from the ACLU, it continues. It says states can address the harms of revenge porn without treading on free speech. 
if and only if those laws are tailored to addressing malicious invasions of privacy. Arizona's law is not, and we are not going to blindly trust that the government will apply the law, this broad law, responsibly only against the quote-unquote bad guys. And they have a picture on their uh, blog post, and it says, the above photo literally illustrates why. And it's a photo that's basically it's a collage of a bunch of pictures of a naked infant in very artsy sorts of photos. Uh, The article continues. It says one of the plaintiffs in the lawsuit, the Voice Media Group, publishes the weekly Phoenix New Times. The New Times published a series of images from a local art show by Arizona artist and Arizona State University professor Betsy Schneider. One of the images from the art show is the image on their blog post, and it documented a month in the life of her infant son. Maricopa County publicly considered opening a police investigation into the publication of the images after police requested an investigation. Better not take a picture of your child being born. A Phoenix City attorney told the press that if the photos were found to be illegal, everybody who picked up one of the issues could be prosecuted for possessing child porn. And that is what can happen when law enforcement officers wield problematic laws as broadly as they're written. Oh, my goodness. So not only would the publisher be in trouble, but everybody that picked up a copy of this free newspaper would wind up possibly facing a felony because the child, the child's an infant. You you can't sign a consent form as an infant. Oh, my gosh. What a brilliant scheme. This is what they're going to do now. You know, those little metal boxes where you can get the free newspapers? Yes. They'll set up a camera right above it, and whoever takes that newspaper, haha, gotcha, on camera, taking child porn, you're going to jail. Yeah. And then not only is it child porn, but also it violates the nude images law because the infant didn't consent to the photo. Therefore, it's in violation of this new law in Arizona that says that every nude person that's depicted has to give consent. But the law doesn't say whether consent stays with the photo or if consent stays with the person depicted in the photo. So, for instance, what I mean by that is, let's just say, Ellen, that you consent to have a nude photo of yourself taken. Which would never happen. I, I'm not saying that you would, but you know, in this scenario, let's just say that you did, and then you decide, I don't want these published anywhere. Well, you consented to having the photo taken. You did not consent to its distribution. So therefore, would it be illegal if somebody showed somebody that picture? That isn't mentioned in the law. It's really unclear. Are you familiar with our movies on the U.S. Constitution featuring experts like Ron Paul, Edwin Vieira, G. Edward Griffin, and Pat Buchanan? Movies such as Fiat Empire, Original Intent, Cultural Marxism, Corporate Fascism, and Molan La Bay. Want to become an associate producer on our seventh feature documentary, Midnight Bride? Simply go to midnightbride.us and donate what you can. Midnightbride.us. Wake up and smell the freedom. One of the easiest things you can do to help Liberty is to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to help keep them drone proof. You can set up your home computer to download and share Freedom Fiends archives over BitTorrent. You can even set up scheduling so it only shares while you're asleep or at work. Put your unused computing power to work and help keep the Freedom Fiends around well into the future. Simply go to freedomfiends.com and click on the Torrent Club link and learn how to torrent and share Freedom Fiends archives. Have you heard? Proactive Plus is faster and better than ever. Stay tuned for a million bottle giveaway and you'll also receive free shipping. Do you have troubled skin? Acne? Well, we have great news. With Proactive Plus, your acne can heal and you can help prevent new breakouts from happening. Don't miss this limited time offer. Give us a call at 800-538-5252 because we're going to let a million people try Proactive Plus risk-free and get two free gifts and also receive free shipping when you call right now. 
You heard it. This offer won't last long. So call Proactive Plus now and you'll receive a 60-day risk-free trial of Proactive Plus, two free extras, and free shipping. Call 800-538-5252. This is our exclusive radio offer, never on TV. Get your risk-free 60-day trial of Proactive Plus with free shipping. That's right, free shipping. Don't wait. Call 800-538-5252. That's 800-538-5252. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Kay Oliver is part of the Toyambe Women's Group in Jinja, Uganda. She gets old clothes, fixes them up, washes them, and then sells them at the Jinja market. She was quite happy with her success at her business, but realized that a sewing machine would really help her make more money to take care of her two kids. Free Talk Live helped her get that sewing machine. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound, try out the subscription, cancel at any time, coffee.freetalklive.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can call in, talk about whatever is on your mind, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. That is the Pro XPN toll-free call-in line. And again, you can call in, talk about whatever is on your mind. We've been talking about the nude images law in Arizona. And John, we'll get to your call in just a second. Because some people might be asking the question, what is Pro XPN? Well, if you value your online privacy, then you need ProXPN. ProXPN is a global virtual private network that allows all of your online data to be encrypted. Your internet service provider is likely saving your surfing history. And how do you, how do you feel about that? Well, with ProXPN, or rather without ProXPN, everything you do online is available for them to review. With ProXPN, you simply download an app for Windows, Mac, iOS, or Android. Linux has a slightly different setup, but ProXPN works with most Linux distributions as well. Then you just connect to the internet and you're protected from all of that. No prying and spying. And one account works for all of your devices simultaneously. No need to have separate accounts for each device. Just go to proxpn.com slash FTL and use the promo code FTL50, that's FTL50, and you get 50% off an annual account. That's almost $5 a month. Though FTL50 will only, or rather, it will get you a savings for the lifetime of your account, no matter which premium account you go with. But if you use the code FTLBTC and pay with Bitcoin, you get 
off an annual account. With the premium account, you get unlimited bandwidth with servers all around the world to access the ability to privately torrent, get past regionally blocked websites, and this is important, ProXPN does not keep records of any of your online habits at all. You get all of that with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. Go to proxpn.com slash FTL. Use the promo code FTL50 or FTLBTC and get a great discount on privacy. And that is priceless. John in northern Minnesota wants to talk about the law in Arizona, the nude images law, as it's called, that the ACLU and the Freedom to Read Foundation think that it goes too far. What do you think, John? Throughout this uh, planet, all they have to do is go door to door, arrest everybody in the house, uh, and, and just go throughout every every place in the whole country. And I'm sure there's a magazine or something or a dictionary or an encyclopedia that has a nude picture in it somewhere, and they can arrest everybody in the house, and uh, and that's the way it sounds like to me. So everybody's a felon. Yeah, according to that law, everybody is. I'm I'm not into nude or taking nude pictures and stuff like that. Well, but, I uh, think everybody needs to start deleting their search history right now. Well, as know, John pointed out, if you've got an encyclopedia then you very yeah. likely are in violation of this law if you live in Arizona. I have because an art history book that probably has plenty of nude pictures in it. It probably does. That There was one of the articles that I was reading on this law that said that uh, some of the historical photos of naked slaves. <gasps> no. Th- those people yeah. most and, likely and, didn't consent. We don't know because they're all dead. The photographers are all dead. Wait, what if they're just dead. illustrations? Wait, they're ki- wait. What kind of sleeves are you talking are about? Go? Yeah. How, how far are they going to go with this law? It's just it's ridiculous. every new law makes a new criminal. Yes. And they're so so ridiculous. So many different laws they have on there. If they just go by the six or seven hundred laws in the scriptures, uh, it'd be a whole different planet here. Well, what what do you mean these six or seven hundred laws in the scriptures? So start yeah. arresting yeah, everybody yeah, that eats seafood. No, no, they're 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 uh, they're. It's crazy what they're doing. They're, all these people are making all these laws throughout the whole planet. You know, right? But and, no, and, John, you you said that if we only went by the six or seven hundred laws in the scriptures, then the world would be different. And I'm asking yeah. if you think that people that eat seafood should wind up being arrested because that, that's in the Old make, Testament. Should children who make fun of where, bald where people be eaten by bears? That's what I want to know. Where, where would Shellfish. Where, where would they? Uh, yeah, where would they uh, arrest somebody for that? They just say it's unclean. They don't tell you they're going to arrest them for it. They never had jails in in Bible times. Right, but I, I'm asking how you would want to enforce those laws now. No, they had public stonings. Well, I ch- people choose. People choose if they want to follow something, or they choose if they don't. Okay, yeah. so it sounds to me like you're advocating a voluntary society to where people get to choose which sort of governance they fall under. I'm just comparing the amount of laws people are making compared to what's in the in the Bible. I'm just comparing it because they make so, so many laws every month. You can't so even keep up with you, it. you would not arrest me for eating shellfish or for growing no, multiple don't. crops in the same field or wearing a 50-50 cotton polyester blend T-shirt? Do they have polyester no, it, back it, then? It, it's a choice. It, it, it's your choice if you want to follow or not. Nobody force, nobody's going to force you to follow the, the law unless they're trying to uh, get you for something. Now, there are some laws that are, that are serious about uh, punishable by death and some that are not. So some don't murder? Don't murder that? That's yeah, a good one. Yeah. There's some that are some that are a deal. You know, I'm not going to start a whole... Uh, study the scriptures over the phone with you. I usually do that in person. But uh, 
I'm just saying how ridiculous this law is. That's the main reason I called. Yeah, yeah I, I completely agree. And, John, thank you for the call. Ellen, did you have anything else that you wanted to add on this nude images law that is basically, as John pointed out, it's going to make a felon out of everybody? I just would like to say that whoever wrote this law, whoever signed this law, anybody that participated in this law, they are all hypocrites. And if there is a hell, I'm sure they're all going to it. How how and why are they hypocrites? Because I'm sure at some point in their life, they've picked up a book or a newspaper or, you know, even recently, they probably watched some movie that had a naked person in it in one scene or another, and they've broken their own law. Yeah, and it, it does seem to be very hypocritical of, you know, people passing laws telling you what you can do and what you can't do. There's just no way that you can— they always try to avoid the laws— I, I'm sure you've heard stories of, you know, politicians getting pulled over for various things that they have written, and then they always want to tell the cop, do you know who I am? Right. Well, in my mind, it's kind of similar to, like, if you're out in public, like, on the sidewalk, and you're recording, and there just so happens to be, like, a group of people in the background, you know, none of them are consenting to be on camera, but they're... They're out in public, so you're assuming that they're consenting to being watched or listened to in some way. Right, and and the video gets out, and well, like did, it would be making it illegal. It, it would be similar or on the same level in my mind to be making make it illegal to have people on camera that did not like sign a waiver form or right, something like that. That that's how broad the wiretapping law is here in New Hampshire. It. Doesn't matter if the person's in public. The law doesn't make an exemption for that. Well, it's just like, are, how are you going to get every single person that wants? Are do you know at some point who is going to buy this this movie or this magazine or this book or whatever it is? Like from now all the way through the ages. Like, do you know every single person? Do you have their name? Are you going to get consent from them? Are you going to seek out right. this kind it's, it's of It's completely ludicrous. Consent. And I, I'm sure that there are naked people at the University of North Carolina, and Pat is in Norfolk, Virginia, and he wants to talk about the University of North Carolina. Pat, what's on your mind? I want to talk, I want to talk about the uh, uh, Matthew, uh, Jesse Matthew, that's uh, been... Uh, you know, and all, and the, the disappearances of the women from the colleges. Okay, you know, you're you're on uh, the air, so tell us about it. Yeah, well, they, they uh, got all kinds of stuff. The um, uh, lady wasn't just uh, Hannah. Um, I, I can't think of her last name, but Hannah is uh, the one they're looking for now out of Charlottesville. And this this guy, uh, they you know they question them. All right, Pat. Thanks for the call. Hopefully you can sober up and get your thoughts together. Uh, We'll be back in just a moment. This is Free Talk Live. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Gabino lives in Palcapata, Peru. He buys old appliances like irons, radios, and TV sets, fixes them up, and resells them. He saw an opportunity to expand his business and needed a loan to buy more appliances. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan, and the expansion was a success. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel anytime. Coffee.freetalklive.com. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at fff at fff.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, 
which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's FFF at FFF.org. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Thursday, October 2nd, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,213. Silver opened at $17.08. And Bitcoin is trading at $379.82. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. Support for Liberty Beat comes from SovereignMiners.com. Interested in mining Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies? Well, Sovereign Miners has you covered. All purchases come with a free script ISIC miner. Visit SovereignMiners.com to buy your miner today. In the news, a Dallas emergency room sent a man with Ebola home last week, even though he told a nurse that he had been in a disease-ravaged West Africa. And officials at the hospital are considering if they would have acted differently had the entire medical staff been aware. The patient, identified by the Associated Press as Thomas Eric Duncan of Liberia, arrived in the United States on September 20th to visit family. Dallas County Health and Human Services Director Zachary Thompson said county officials suspect that 12 to 18 people may have had contact with Duncan. It was also revealed by Dallas School District Superintendent Mike Miles that five students at four schools had come into contact with Duncan. The St. Louis County Prosecutor's Office has begun an investigation into claims of misconduct on the grand jury assigned to the case of Ferguson officer Darren Wilson. The Washington Post reports that the prosecutor's office received information from a Twitter user alleging that one of the jurors may have discussed the case with a friend. A supposed friend of one of the jurors tweeted that there was not enough evidence to warrant an arrest of Wilson. If there has been a violation of confidentiality, a new grand jury would need to be formed. A decision from the grand jury had been expected by mid to late October. U.S. Secretary of State Henry Kissinger ordered contingency plans drawn up nearly 40 years ago to attack Cuba, incensed over the small island's deployment of troops to Angola, according to declassified government documents posted online Wednesday. In several White House meetings, Kissinger advocated for strong action to stop Castro, fearful that his incursion in Africa was making the U.S. look weak. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Midas Resources Incorporated helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Did you know you can support the Liberty Beat when shopping on Amazon.com? Just simply log into your account after clicking our Amazon affiliate link at libertybeat.com Amazon. You can help the Liberty Beat continue to deliver hard-hitting Liberty news and activist updates by doing your Amazon shopping after following our link at thelibertybeat.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Thursday, October 2nd, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com and like us on Facebook at facebook.com, the Liberty Beat. The U.S. government hopes to keep an upcoming hearing on forced feedings in Guantanamo Bay private. The hearing deals with a 43-year-old Syrian citizen who has been on hunger strike for 18 months. He's asking a federal court to stop the forced feedings that began as a response to the widespread hunger strikes that began at the prison in the summer of 2013. The Department of Justice believes the hearing should be done in private because the case involves classified, protected, and unclassified information, including procedures used to transport detainees. Sixteen different organizations have called on the court to release videotapes of the forced feedings. The American Medical Association stated that forced feedings violates core ethical values of the medical profession. Beginning Monday, the Harris County, Texas Sheriff's Office and Houston Police Department will not prosecute Houstonians found with less than two ounces of cannabis. For the next six months, the law enforcement agencies will not charge first-time nonviolent offenders with less than two ounces in their possession, 
as long as they agree to perform eight hours of community service or take an eight-hour class. The move is part of a six-month pilot program being carried out by the district attorney's office. DA Devin Anderson said the agencies wanted to focus their resources on citizens who are committing rapes, robberies, assaults, and murders. Support for Liberty Beat comes from My Magic Mud, all natural teeth whitener. Go to MyMagicMud.com to hear a short interview with Dr. Griffin Cole. That's MyMagicMud.com. And support comes from the Conscious Resistance Network. Videos, news reports, and articles from a spiritual anarchist perspective. Experience the Conscious Resistance at TheConsciousResistance.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Thursday, October 2nd, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with... It's the Onion Radio News. Starbucks begins its sinister phase two of operation. This is Doyle Redland reporting. After a decade of aggressive expansion throughout North America and abroad, Starbucks suddenly and unexpectedly closed its 56,423 worldwide locations today to prepare for what insiders call phase two of the company's long-range plan. Cynthia Valcamp, Starbucks head of marketing, made this brief statement at a press conference earlier today. We have enjoyed furnishing you with coffee-related beverages and are excited about the important role you play in our future plans. Existing Starbucks franchises across the nation have been shuttered with high-strength titanium, and the well-known Starbucks logo has been slightly altered to present the familiar mermaid figure as a cyclopean mermaid whose all-seeing eye forms the apex of a world-spanning pyramid. Royal Redland for The Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com. This is Free Talk Live. You can call in, talk about whatever is on your mind. We'll even put you on if you're a little bit drunk, although that's not preferable. We do like sober callers because sober callers make more sense. But again, you can call in, take over the We're airwaves. not prejudiced. 855 450 free. That's the Pro XPN toll free call in line. And the we in studio tonight is me, Daryl, and Ellen. Who me, is, Ellen. I'm I, eating. I, I thought you still had a mouthful of tortellinis. Well, maybe I do, but you shouldn't assume that I can't talk with my mouth full. So I, I, I was not going to make you be rude and try to say something with your mouth full. You know, I have a face for radio, which means that my face can also be eating while on radio. Yeah, that that's not what face for radio means. I have a face for radio. You are a very attractive young woman. So, you know, face for radio generally means an ugly guy. Well, that's your opinion. So, Ellen, tell <laughs> us about the Russian people who are handing over their Superman and Wolverine and Coca-Cola t-shirts in favor of things that more appropriately show their devotion to the motherland. Mother Russia. Well, this article that I have is from Reuters.com, and it is titled, Russians Hand in Western T-Shirts and Patriotic Fashion Drive, which makes it sound very glitzy, by Alessandra Prentice. Looking to put a patriotic spin on international sanctions over Ukraine, a local group is touring Moscow, urging passers-by to swap their Western-branded T-shirts for homegrown tops supporting, or er, sporting pro-Russian slogans. Sanctions don't make my Iskanders laugh. Uh, reads one T-shirt referring to a Russian missile system, and I actually had to look into this missile system, seeing as I'm very curious about this Iskander. So, and, well, um, what is the Iskander? It is a very heavy and very accurate missile that the Russians designed themselves. So is it sort of the Russian equivalent to, like, the Patriot missile? I'm not really sure what the Patriot missile is. The The Patriot missile was one of the ones that the U.S. military used during the 1991 Gulf War against Saddam. I'm not really sure. I'm just assuming that Russian technology is like 20 years behind whatever America has. I'm not really sure. Maybe you should look this up and read me the specs since you're so good at, you know, being detailed. Because all I know is that this is a very large missile and it's 
very accurate. Very large, very accurate. Yes, and very deadly. The 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 only reason that I brought up the Patriot missile was as as far as you know, like American missiles, that's the one that Americans could name. The Most Patriot Americans missile. could tell you, oh yeah, the Patriot missiles. We fired those on Saddam. But people couldn't really tell you anything else about it. Right. Well, from what I remember, these missiles can travel several hundred miles and still be accurate within okay. 200 meters, so it, which is, it is sounds, pretty good. It sounds like it might be the Russian equivalent to the U.S. Patriot missile. Right. Okay, t- tell me more about... The top hall is not afraid of sanctions, says another, vaunting the power of a Russian intercontinental ballistic missile. And this is also a missile that I looked up, and it's massive. It's about 30 meters long, which... It, to Americans, let me translate, that's, that's about, about 100, 100 feet. feet. Yep. And um, this one can actually be transported on trucks, although it's much harder to maintain, so usually they just keep them in silos. Oh, okay. So is that the one? Do you remember the movie Spies Like Us? No. With I wish I did. Chevy Chase. It probably came out before you were born. Before my time. The, I don't there, know. Were, there was a movie with Chevy Chase and some other funny guy i don't remember who was it woody allen no it wasn't Woody. i, I said know. funny <laughs> uh don't say that woody allen's not funny the, the uh dan Aykroyd. it was chevy chase and dan Aykroyd, and they thought that they were spies in the soviet union but it turned out that they were actually the decoy spies and they were going trying to find some large Russian missile that was being carried through Siberia on some truck, and they had to deactivate this nuclear warhead thing that was on it. And it, it was a very funny movie. So I, I'm just wondering if that was a Topol, since you mentioned that it can be transported on a truck. Possibly. Maybe you should uh, search that. I, I just... think I will. Okay. Well, as you're searching, I will continue reading. A bus decorated with the blue, white, and red of the Russian flag, which, can I just interject? I don't know why they put blue, white, and red instead of red, white, and blue. Maybe it's too reminiscent of American, and they don't want to tie Russia with America. But and actually, I, I think it's, that it's, just it's slightly white, irritating. red, and blue. I, I believe that their tricolor has a white bar, a red bar, and then a blue bar on the bottle. Or maybe it's white, blue, red. I don't know. Either way, like... I, I just know that they purposely mixed up the order just so that it wouldn't be tied back to right. American sentiment. But th- those are the three colors that are the most common on flags. Every flag, yes. Because, you know, red and blue are both primary colors and white goes with everything. So come on, people. Come on. Anyway, a bus decorated with the red, white, and blue of the Russian flag has already exchanged 10,000 tops this week and is due to keep on touring the capital until October 6th. Everyone's being res- everyone's been responding well, even foreigners. People are giving up their shirts with pleasure, said Anastasia Zar- Zadorina, the campaign's designer, wearing one of her own creations. We have our own cool things without Coca-Cola. Western nations have imposed an array of sanctions on Russia in response to its involvement in the conflict in Ukraine, including its annexation of Crimea earlier this year, which I hope that you can explain a little bit, Daryl, just to give uh, some context. So Crimea is a peninsula that the Russian Federation claims is now part of Russia. The Ukrainian central government claims that it's part of Ukraine. But Crimea is one of these weird sort of things to where before 19, I, I believe it was 1952, Crimea was part of Russia, part of the Russian Soviet Republic within the USSR, which was the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. And then Crimea was gifted to U- the Ukrainian Socialist Republic that was also within the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. So it it was one of these things that was like an internal land shift because the Soviet president at the time, Nikita Khrushchev, wanted his republic to be larger than it was, so he gifted Crimea to Ukraine. So a lot of the people that live in Crimea are He just gave away all those people? Right, but it it was an internal shift. So it, it would be akin to... 
say, Winchester, New Hampshire being gifted to Massachusetts. No. It's still within the U.S., but it doesn't really make a lot of difference because it's not an independent entity. Or, right. Well, not to you, but those people are becoming Massachusetts people at that point. And okay. I, I'm not going to say the name Hold that on. most people from Massachusetts are called because I don't know if it's a curse or not. Right. But nobody wants to be known as okay. that thing. Let, 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 let me use a different example. The Upper Peninsula of Michigan. The UP? The, the UP. If the Upers became Minnesotans instead no. of being Michiganders, Michiganians, whatever, but there, if actually, they were no longer like that the too. extra part of the hand, like everybody knows that Michigan is the hand, and then there's that little extra part that's up at the top. It's the mitten and the rabbit. So, and there's even conflict over whether it's Michigander or Michiganian. Personally, okay. I like Michiganian just because it sounds zany. But if the Upper Peninsula was, you know, for some reason just gifted to Minnesota. Or Canada. That'd be or weird. Or Canada. Then, well, Canada, then it becomes an international dispute. I, I'm just trying to think of an equivalent of giving Crimea to Ukraine within the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. It didn't change what country those people were in. Okay. But now, you know, 30, what is it, 20 some odd years after the fall of the USSR, and it's debated whether or not the people in Crimea actually wanted to go back to Russia. We can talk more about that when we come back on Free Talk Live. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Hey guys, if you're into fantasy football, you've got to check out FanDuel.com. At FanDuel, you play in one-week fantasy football leagues for real money with immediate cash payouts. You only play when you want, and you can change your team any week. FanDuel is paying out over $10 million every week this season. And right now, FanDuel is giving you up to $200 free. That's right, for every dollar you deposit, FanDuel will match it up to $200. Just go to FanDuel.com, click the microphone in the upper right corner, and enter code FOOTBALL70. F-A-N-D-U-E-L.com. Code FOOTBALL70. the number 70. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Uh, excuse me, is this where I get a license to start a new business? I wouldn't be hasty. You have to get a license to go out of business, too, you know. Oh, well, look, I've invented this little anti-gravity machine, see? Oh, is that why you're walking two inches above the floor? <laughs> oh, yes, it's it's very comfortable. It saves on shoe leather. Yeah, well, you have to fill out these forms and report to the Human Services Department of Manpower Orientation and register with the Fair Employment Practice Commission, just the Wage and I... Hour Division of the Employment Standards Administration, the State Sales and Income Tax Division, the Internal Revenue Service, well, and the I Social Security Administration li- of the Department of Health, Education, and Wealth. Fair, and of course, OSHA. OSHA? I thought that was a little town in Wisconsin. You'll find out. Say, floating around like that could be dangerous. Have you checked with the Consumer Product Safety Commission? Well, not yet. Come to think of it, you actually are flying, aren't you? Look, you need to go over to the Federal Aviation Administration and the Transportation... It's very hard to get anything done these days if you're in business, but Free Enterprise built this country. Think what could happen if we don't keep it free. A public service of this station and the Center for the Defense of Free Enterprise, Bellevue, Washington. We just can't have people floating about unregulated, you know. 
Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. Welcome back to Free Talk Live. 855 450 free. That is the SACL, or not the SACL, the Pro XPN toll free call in line. That's how you can call in to take control of the airwaves. Ellen has been telling us about the new trend in Russia to hand in your Western themed t shirts. And if you want to. You know, if you're too shy to call, you can chat with other listeners and watch the webcam. The webcam, there's one that points at Ellen's lovely face. You can go to cam.freetalklive.com. I'm not sure. Every now and then, Ellen jumps into the chat room. Not sure if she's in there Periodically, tonight. yep. I'm I'm in there right now. But I'm watching. You, you Don't can, you think I'm not seeing what you're writing in there? You, you can watch the webcam and chat with other listeners at cam.freetalklive.com. So, Ellen, I was explaining a little bit about the history of Crimea because you had asked, and I hate myself because I was two years off on when Crimea was transferred from Russia to Ukraine within the USSR. It was 1954, not 1952. Gosh, how did you not know that? I feel like that's just general knowledge. Like, everybody knows when Crimea went. No, they don't. No, they don't. I didn't know. I didn't know you were wrong. I had no inkling. (laughs) But thank you for correcting yourself. Yeah, well, I, I was pulling up info to make sure that I was right on the date and also to give a little bit of... The more updated history, because after the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991, Crimea was considered an autonomous republic within Ukraine, meaning that they had extra levels of freedom, that they didn't necessarily have to abide by all of the Ukrainian laws. There were laws that they could have that didn't apply outside of Crimea. And again, it's questionable the validity of the vote of whether or not people in Crimea actually voted to join Russia and to leave Ukraine. But regardless, I still support the concept of self-determination, meaning that people should have the right, if they don't want to be part of one country, to say, we don't want to be part of this country anymore. And not just whether or not a majority of people decide that they want to remain or leave, but down to the individual level. I think that every person living in Crimea that said, I don't want to be part of Ukraine, should not have to be part of Ukraine, and they should be able to stay in their house where they live. And if those people also said, I don't want to be part of Russia, then okay, fine, you're not part of Russia either. Same thing goes with Scotland, where they recently had their independence vote that wound up being unsuccessful. Right. They didn't get independence, did they? That's, no, they did not. That's pretty unfortunate. But there, there's questions over the validity of that vote as well. Right. How can how can you tell if the vote was, you know, changed in some way? Right. You never know. Well, this is crazy conspiracy. Maybe there are people who really feel nationalistic, but I, I watched the independence debate 
And I personally think the independence uh, portion had more sense and validity than the, uh, you know, the the side that wanted to stay in the United Kingdom. Right. So tell us more about the people in Russia and why they hate Superman (laughs) and Coca-Cola. All right, so this Reuters article goes on to say, The punitive measures have limited Russia's access to foreign money, sent the ruble to historic lows, and slowed economic growth to a crawl. Russia has responded by banning many Western food products and appealing to patriotic fervor. Well, that sounds familiar. We can't live. W- we can live without oysters and Parmesan and without Western fashion, Zadarina said. We don't want to offend anyone. We just love our homeland. And that sounds a lot like uh, something that somebody would say living under Stalin. Uh, that sounds that's just like what something I think. people would say living in the U.S. We don't need those Russian products. Right, but this is... I don't want real vodka and caviar. <laughs> I'm just saying this is not America. new for... This is not new for Russia. Well, I guess there's a lot of nations that have had nationalistic fervors in the past. But right, and, Russia in particular has had not such a good history as far as that goes. You know, right. like the the Red Revolution and everything. It just, the, nothing, nothing as far as Russian history was ever pleasant. And um, anybody who says that they love Mother Russia, to like in my mind, it just seems like they're trying to hang on to this, this wonderful picture of a, a glorious empire that just really is a, a thin veneer on a very corrupt and dying uh interior but it's not just people that say i love mother russia but people that talk about the fatherland or you know the union or the united states people that are ultra nationalistic of my country is the greatest my homeland my government can do no wrong that is the mentality of people that aren't really thinking straight right and well it just doesn't make economic sense like just because there there are sanctions where you can't have access to these things doesn't mean you should just be like well guess i hate it now right just because i can't have access to coca-cola that means that i don't want it ever again right but there there were people remember when the apple iStore removed the blockchain bitcoin app from their iStore, there were a lot of Bitcoin users that then made videos of themselves shooting and blowing up their Apple products. No, I, I don't of, remember that. I can't download the app anymore. It hasn't been removed from the device that I have it on, but it's no longer available as a download, so therefore I'm going to blow up my $500 iPhone, my thousand dollar ipad my imac and everything else apple related yeah that's just a really silly waste of money whereas th- this is more like recalcitrance i guess it's it's just spiteful although russia is becoming increasingly isolated president vladimir putin has won backing at home with a survey by the independent levada post pollster putting support for him at 86 percent in september the highest since 2008 and uh, I'm waiting just a second for the page to load. Sorry, this is uh, going on. Some of the T-shirts on offer were printed with pictures of military hardware, while others are decorated with an image of the knotted red necktie, synonymous with the communist pioneer movement of the former Soviet Union. So, this article is saying that they're handing out pi- they're handing out T-shirts with the hammer and sickle on them, and and military uh military hardware like so they're they're promoting socialism and violence and i i just um i don't know i find this a little shocking they think about a lot of the products that are for sale here in the u.s they're mostly sexualized i don't really see too much actual like violence and like where do you see a hammer and sickle i saw one saying hammer and sickle but look at all of the camouflage stuff that's all, true. all of the military worshiping stuff that Good is for point. sale. It's not that different here. The only difference is they have Vladimir Putin. We have Barack Obama. They have the motherland. We have Lady Liberty. You can call in. Summertime.
is saved big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long-term customers know summer is the time to stock up at HerbalHealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for summer specials, including all sizes of colloidal silver, colloidal minerals, and intestinal freedom on sale. Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, hudia, and metabolic complex and pro-metabolic all on sale now. Also, the anti-parasite intestinal freedom and wormwood plus complex plus stevia liquid sweetener and the super enzymes all on sale for summer at herbalhealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to HerbalHealer.com and look for summer specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education. Since 1988, Herbal Healer Academy. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. 855-450 free. That is how you can call in and take over the airwaves. Again, 855-450-3733. We will get to your calls in just a moment. But first, I want to make sure that I tell you about ExpressCoin.com. I had mentioned earlier how you can earn some Bitcoin But now I'm going to tell you how you can buy some Bitcoin, but not just Bitcoin. Also, Litecoin, Blackcoin, Darkcoin, 
and Dogecoin. ExpressCoin is the best choice for getting your cryptocurrencies. All of those that I mentioned, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Blackcoin, Darkcoin, Dogecoin, you can get all of those at ExpressCoin.com. It's fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive. They are licensed as a money services business. You can get your cryptocurrencies with money order, check, wire transfer, or by making a deposit at a local credit union that has shared branching. Just start off at ExpressCoin.com. Whether in the U.S. or Canada, it's ExpressCoin.com. You can even do it from your smartphone by downloading their app at ExpressCoin.com. And if you use coupon code FTL, you can get up to $40 worth of the cryptocurrency of your choice of the ones that they offer, and you pay no fee. Anything over $40, it is a minimal fee of 3%. ExpressCoin.com, coupon code FTL. So, Ellen, finish telling us about the people in Russia who are turning over and handing in their T-shirts that have references to Western companies such as Coca-Cola. The self-styled ideologist behind the campaign, Senia Melnikova, said the project was not funded by the Kremlin. The group's website lists Moscow's Vnukovo Airport and two other Russian firms as corporate partners. We're also going to Crimea 100%. Other regions are inviting us also, said Melnikova. The Western shirts will be recycled or used to make a political artwork, she added. Askana, a 25-year-old student, said she was happy to support the patriotic campaign and swap in her Western top for a new Russian design. It will all be okay in the end, though. We'll be friends again with the West before long, she said, which is an optimistic ending, but I still think it's 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 slightly ignorant to uh, swap a shirt that sports some brand or item that you might support for uh, something that represents violence and and degradation, really. Right, but isn't showing any kind of support for any government really showing a support for violence? Because, after all, that's what governments do. Yeah, and I, I would say especially so in Russia, just because uh, the the extreme amount of, like, socialism that it dabbles in. But I, you know, I can't really blame people for having nationalistic sentiments. Like, they've grown up, they've lived this They've lived in this area their entire lives. It's all they know. Of course they love it. They have to because this is all that they have. And to them, it might seem like a great life just because they've never seen anything better. And maybe maybe they're under some sort of pressure. Maybe they feel, like, frightened if they say anything negative. I don't know. What do you mean it's all that they have? I mean— Nationalism, I'm— No, I mean, if you live in a place—if you— were born in Russia, if you grew up in Russia, if okay. you lived in the same place your entire life, that is the only life you know. You don't know what right, it's like but, to be an American. You don't know what it's like to live in South America or Africa right, or, but or just Australia. Because, but just because you only live in one country your entire life doesn't mean that you have to be nationalistic. It doesn't mean that you have to be a xenophobe. No, it doesn't mean that. But if you're just an average person... Then I'm assuming, uh, you know, a lot of these people probably don't have that much access to knowledge outside of their country. Uh, you know, I'm I'm guessing that what they see, especially within Russia, of you know, like Russian propaganda, they probably have this idea that Russia is a very great country and they're lucky that they live there. Okay, and people in the U.S. have the same thoughts. The U.S. is the greatest country ever. Even though survey after survey where they look at anecdotal evidence shows that the U.S. is barely in the top 15. Yeah, and how much would you laugh at somebody if you went out to Walmart one day and you saw somebody wearing a shirt that said, Communism, you can say that to my AK-47 or my double barrel shotgun. Like, wouldn't that person be making a joke out of themselves? Wouldn't you... Go up to that person and be like, you have no idea what you're promoting right now. I, I you are just even... saying, I'm going to fight your ideology with my my violence because that's all I know. I, I wouldn't even 
engage that person. But you'd be a little frightened, wouldn't you? Just a tiny twinge of like, there's evil there somewhere. I don't think I would even be frightened. It it would be a thing of, I already know, I can tell that we are not going to have a lot of common ground. Right, but it's... Just like if I see somebody that has a bunch of bumper stickers on the back of their car promoting, you know, like, let's go kill people, I'm not going to have a lot in common with them. No, but you can you can still see that and be a little concerned. Like, obviously, this person is lacking in the ideology department if, if you know, they're promoting violence as a way to argue. Certainly. Uh, let's go to the phones. Habu is calling in from Madison, Wisconsin, wants to talk about Russia. Habu, you were on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Good evening to both of you. Uh, you know, I'm I'm somewhat bemused listening to this conversation um, that uh, uh, about the you know you know the kind of uh, um, uh, socialism or or, or 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 thought in Russia. Um, uh, you know, let me just give you the opposite. That and and you're not pointing fingers as if you know it's 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 all negative or what have you. But let me just say this. Um, here in the United States, where we have really open channels, uh, really more or less anything is open. You can get to most things, um, except to those books that you were talking about in the first hour. Uh, but uh, um, and and even then, even then, uh, uh, people um, before 2003, 60 to 70 percent of people believed uh, what the administration was telling them about Saddam. And, and uh, Condoleezza Rice was talking about the mushroom, mushroom cloud. So people fell for this. Uh, um, and now, um, with these kind of beheadings made for TV, uh, you, you're seeing uh, that almost 60 to 70 percent of the Americans want to have action in bomb Syria and, and Iraq. And, and, and this is how many times we've done this for the millionth time uh, since about 30 years ago. So... Even, you know, yes, the Russians are somewhat of an isolated people, uh, but uh, us Americans and maybe even other Westerners uh, uh, who live in such open, free societies are still swept by the same hysteria that uh, we see in the Russians. But, you know, there's one difference. Since World War II, I don't think uh, Russia or the Soviet Union then and then subsequently Russia have killed enough people around the world as uh, the United States. I mean, that is uh, that is incandescently clear. So, you know, uh, and even Putin, for all that he's done, he's actually rescued Amer- uh, um, Russia from the brinks, brink of, of disaster. Uh, uh, where and, and, and this would have been a disaster for the world where people were doing so badly w- with Yeltsin that there was really fear uh, uh, among military elites that, some of these suitcase nuclear bombs would be sold off um, uh, to to, to uh, um, mercenary groups or to some governments, uh, which would then be used uh, 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 against, actually be used. So anyway, that's what all I have to say. And thank you for the courtesy. Habu, thank you very much for the call. And he's right. The Russian government hasn't killed anywhere near as many people as the American government since World War II. Not outside of the country. More when we come back. Talk radio generally and Free Talk Live specifically are a really inexpensive way to reach customers. All advertising is about return on investment. If you keep your investment low, you have a better chance of seeing a proper return. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations and the internet, reaching hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Majid lives in Nor Devin, Armenia with his wife, kids, and grandkids, all in the same house. They have cows, but to compete against the big ranchers, Majid needed to get a loan for more cattle. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the cows. He bought them, and now he's very happy with the expansion of his farm. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel at any time. coffee.freetalklive.com. 
Question. Could too many GMO foods and toxins be overloading your digestive and immune systems? Answer. Yes. If you're searching for a powerful detox that's gentle enough to use every day, use Pro-EM1 from Terraganics. Pro-EM1 is a powerful liquid probiotic that uses good bacteria to suppress pathogens and gently eliminate toxins from your body. A healthy digestive system will cleanse and remove toxins, support weight loss, improve absorption of food nutrients, and aid in controlling yeast and other infections. Pro-EM1 is made with only non-GMO and certified organic ingredients, has no preservatives, and is dairy, soy, wheat, and gluten-free. Pro-EM1 is the key to your digestive health. Order Pro-EM1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse at Terraganix.com, spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com. Or call toll-free 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Also available through Amazon Prime. Pro EM1 from Terraganics. Life's getting better. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American Empire? The Empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can call in, take over the airwaves, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Oh, yeah, and we have Skype, too. Woo! I have neglected to mention Skype, and we got a Skype call that we'll take here in just a moment, but you can Skype in. The username is lrn.fm. You will need to send a contact request first. That way you can send the chat message of what topic it is that you want to talk about. And if you miss any of the shows, it's okay. You can go to archives.freetalklive.com. And there's archives going all the way back to late 2006. That's nearly eight years of archives that are available for free. Other syndicated talk radio programs, they want to charge you for their archives. We give them to you for free. Again, you can find full show archives at archives.freetalklive.com. And again, that goes back all the way to late 2006. So going now to Skype, Dave in Montana is on the Skypes. And if you have Skype, it sounds so much better. It sounds almost like you are in studio with us. Dave. What's on your mind? Hey, yo, Free Talk Live. How you doing tonight? We're hey, doing all talk. right. 
want to talk about Russia a little. It's only natural that they be uh, not wanting to use Western things because we sanctioned them. We're telling Russia, you can't sell oil in rubles. You got to use uh, petrodollars. US dollars, yeah. The, you know, you can't you can't blame them. You know, if, if somebody came here and told us we can't be using our money for something, <laughs> we'd be we'd be freaking out. Right. Well, I don't I'm not blaming them. Like, I'm not saying that what they're doing is wrong. I'm just saying that it, it's a little spiteful. And, um, you know, if if I had How something that spiteful? I liked, if I had something that I liked that was Russian and then all of a sudden Russia was like, nope, you got sanctions now. I, w- I wouldn't just give up that product. So if you I, I still had like the product, if you had it's just the country I don't like. If you had Russian nesting dolls or some kind of vodka that you got imported from Russia, you wouldn't pour the vodka down the sink. You would still nope, drink I'd the drink vodka. I'd drink that thing. I, I would, wouldn't either. What's that? I wouldn't either. <clears throat> I, you know, I'm not a person like that. You know, because I, I don't even think we should be uh you know telling other countries what they could be using to buy stuff with you know they, yeah. they could use mm-hmm. and, and Russia is teaming up with China right now they're building a whole new uh canal through Nicaragua right now so they're going to avoid the Panama canal and they're going to it's like a a brick unification the bricks the br- Brazil Russia China India and South Africa they're going to make their own little bank. It's going to be interesting in the next few years when the bricks get moving. Yeah, well, good for that. So t- tell us more about this canal through Nicaragua. Yeah, China's building it, and now Ch- Russia joined in with China, and they're going to put a, a brand-new canal right across uh, Nicaragua. And it's funny, USA just sent 200 Marines down there to Honduras, probably real close to Nicaragua, under the assumption of uh, weather protection, you know, to treat the people, you know, help train the people. Right. You know, they're they're they, not there for anything related. They're just there on some separate mission, right? Well, I don't know. Why would you send Marines to train for... Uh, you know, this isn't the first time I've heard of something like this, hurricane. though. Hurricane. Yeah. You, know, you would send the FEMA people, maybe, you know, I don't, the Marines. Well, now that I know that China and Russia is making a big canal across Nicaragua, now it kind of makes sense. But they're, they're, they're China and Russia and Brazil, India and South Africa, man. That, that's like two thirds of the world's population. You know, there's really no stopping the BRICS once they get unified and get momentum so what what do you think they're going to wind up doing once they wind up uh as you say getting unified and getting momentum and after this canal they use their gets own built. banks they use their own banks until the federal reserve to sh- take a hike to shove off well, okay good for them i mean what's wrong with that ha- how well, does that affect they, my they don't data want that. america doesn't want that right now you can't sell oil without using u.s dollars and our the united states navy is like the oil police well, you can't be shipping oil anywhere without it being bought and, and sold in american dollars well that's like saying that you can't barter like you can sell oil I, i'm everybody values oil for something like, yeah, I'm but sure Americans you... really don't know that. There's like a rule you don't sell oil in the world without using USA dollars. And and, and I'm like aghast at that because that's all against what America is all about, freedom, right? Well, Supposedly. that's the claim that America is about freedom. <laughs> but when you but look you at the out... history of the country, you know, the, the governments have consistently done, you know, unfree, anti-freedom things. The first president of the United States under the Constitution that we have now sent in the militia to go enforce attacks on whiskey just a few years after having fought a war against Britain because of a tax. And the stamp tax. George Washington had a distillery at that time, too. So <laughs> I guess it was like a monopoly thing, too. He he was probably selling booze on the side. <laughs> yeah, then, and... And freedom in a country that still allowed slavery as a little questionable, too. 
Right. And uh, once you find out, <clears throat> investigate fractional reserve banking, man, it's totally un-American. Uh, it's magic, though. I mean, they just create money. That's <laughs> how it's taught in high school, out, anyway. And you find out every country we're, like, involved with doesn't use that kind of banking. You know, I mean, the ones we're trying to bomb. I, I, I would want to see some anecdotal evidence on that. Because fractional reserve banking, it's not just something that the U.S. Federal Reserve does. It's something that has been done for centuries. And it's not, you know, like I said, it's not a creation of the U.S. Federal Government. It's not a creation of the Federal Reserve. It's something that has been it. happening for centuries. So I, I would want some sort of evidence to support the claim the that— The Federal Reserve kind of made it into an art. <laughs> right. Anyway. I, I'm not going to deny that, but to claim that the countries that the U.S. government is bombing don't have fractional reserve banking, they that don't. is Every a little hard them, for me to believe. It's like take the central bank or get bombed. What do you think I rent? If you look at every all government the problems, in the every country in the world has a central bank, Dave. Not not every one of them. No, they don't. A lot of them due to Muslim banking, and that has nothing to do with Federal Reserve stuff. <clears throat> I, I didn't say every doing... country uses a Federal Reserve. I said they have a central bank. That's well, they different. They want to make one world money, see, is what they're doing. And they want everybody on that fit, that fractional reserve banking system. They don't want no other system. And if you look at where all the problems are in the globe right now, it's it's on the the, the old silk trail where every border and pass on that silk trail, the northern route and the southern route, the southern route, Iran is right in the middle of it. To see, they they've been wanting a train track from England to Beijing for forever, ever since you know Genghis Ooh. Khan and. It, the they didn't have power. trains when Genghis Khan well, was I'm around. Saying, it, well, I'm saying they wanted... They did have roving a, hordes, a trade. though. A, they wanted a, a whole... The Silk Road. Trade? Who, Is that what you're saying? Yeah, everything... It's all about tolls and everything. If you see... if you The, the whole Silk... They want to build a highway from, you know, Europe all the way to China. Right? And, and they got to go through Iran because that's... they Iran is perfectly situated right under the black sea all the way down to the to the red sea and the, the indian ocean i guess well they they could go through russia but that's definitely well, not that's preferable dave th thanks for the route. call we, we've got that's other callers that we have to take we are now going to ray in pennsylvania who wants to talk about hey. roku ray you're on free talk live hey hi daryl um I, I recently noticed that you have a uh, an LRN.FM Roku channel. Yes, and, we do. Uh, yeah. And I just wanted to uh, – uh, I, I don't know if you guys mentioned it on the air or not, but I myself find it to be very uh, convenient um, just because of my situation with my computer. It's just really convenient for me to turn on the, the Roku channel. And, All right, uh, Ray, hold on. We're at the end of hour two. Hold on. We'll bring you back after the news. And, of course, you can call in 855-450-FREE. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. 
This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Pure Life Water, helping you drink better and live better by providing a zero-calorie alternative to sugary drinks. Visit us at nestle-purelife.us. When kids are playing, they often don't want to stop to keep hydrated. So send them out with a bottle of water and encourage them to take frequent drink breaks or call them inside for a quick sip. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash your family today. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Kane in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, October 3rd, 2014. Silver is trading at $16.88 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,200 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $373. Antiwar.com reports, though the ceasefire that brought the eastern Ukraine war to a halt is holding across 90% of the country, the rebel capital of Donetsk continues to be a flashpoint, with the military continuing to shell rebel-held residential neighborhoods and rebels still trying to take the airport. The latest push on the airport began yesterday morning and was the second time this week they tried to advance. The Ukraine military denied reports that large parts of the airport had fallen and insisted they retained it. Meanwhile, the shelling of residential neighborhoods, which left 10 dead the day before, continued through the night, killing a Swiss Red Cross worker outside the organization's Donetsk office. Ukraine denied the shelling that hit the Red Cross worker, even though it was against rebel-held territory. The Red Cross issued a statement warning indiscriminate shelling of residential areas violates international law. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. The Associated Press reports, Hong Kong's embattled leaders refused demands by pro-democracy demonstrators to resign on Thursday and instead offered talks to defuse a week of massive demonstrations that have gone into the biggest challenge to Beijing's authority since China took control of the former British colony in 1997. The Hong Kong Federation of Students said in a statement early Friday that they plan to join the talks with the government focused specifically on political reforms. They reiterated that Chief Executive Long Chong Ying should step down, saying he has lost his integrity. A wider pro-democracy group that had joined the demonstrations, Occupy Central, welcomed the talks and also insisted that the leader step down. Occupy Central said in a statement it, quote, hopes the talks can provide a turning point in the current political stalemate. However, we reiterate our view that Chief Executive Long Chun Ying is the one responsible for the stalemate and he must step down, end quote. The students had threatened to surround or occupy government buildings if he did not step down, and police had warned of serious consequences if protesters carried out that threat. The protesters want Beijing to reverse its decision that all candidates in the inaugural 2017 elections for chief executive be approved by a committee of mostly pro-Beijing elites. They say China is reneging on its promise that the city's top leader will be chosen through universal suffrage. You can support FPP Radio by shopping online. Whether you're looking for t-shirts, precious metals, bitcoins, or books, you'll find that and more at shop.fppradio.com. Every purchase you make from one of my affiliates at shop.fppradio.com helps fund FPP Radio. That's shop.fppradio.com. 
Reuters reports a federal appeals court ruled on Thursday that Texas could begin enforcing restrictions on abortion clinics that critics of the new law say will force all but seven of the facilities in the state to shut down. A panel of the 5th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals in New Orleans ruled that Texas could enforce the requirement that clinics have certain hospital-like settings for surgeries while the court weighs the constitutionality of the 2013 law. A lower court in August ruled that the ambulatory surgical center requirement was unconstitutional, finding it placed an undue burden on women seeking abortions. Texas officials appealed that ruling. Abortion rights advocates who have argued that the requirement will leave approximately 1 million Texas women who are of reproductive age at least 150 miles from an abortion clinic and were critical of the ruling. Supporters of the law, who say the rules will reduce complications and improve patient care, applauded the ruling. Under the rules, Texas clinics will have to meet a set of building standards ranging from widening halls to having facilities for certain surgeries that abortion rights advocates say are unnecessary, especially when an abortion is medically induced. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. With job numbers near historic lows, Forbes magazine has released a list of tips for finding a job, all of which involve witnessing an employer murder someone. Forbes says despite the grim economy, employers are still hungry for talented workers who know how important it is to forget about whatever they think they saw or heard. So uh, me and a couple of friends were out smoking at the viaduct the other day, and uh, we saw this really rich guy in a Mercedes pull up in his car and drop a uh, nothing. Now I'm the Vice President of International Development. According to Goldman Sachs CEO Lloyd Blankfein, we had a great quarter and hired hundreds of new employees. I haven't done anything wrong and all my employees will tell you the same thing because that's the deal we had. But the article warns that stumbling onto a coke fueled CEO strangling a prostitute isn't a foolproof method for finding work because employers are just as likely to murder you as they are to hire you. This is the Onion News Network. Welcome back to Free Talk Live, kicking off our number three. Ian and Mark are in Orlando, so while the cats are away, the mice will play. And the mice tonight are me, Daryl. And me, Ellen. The, kicking, as always. The lovely Ellen. Oh, thank you. Lovely, as always. I know earlier you said you had a face for radio, but... It, I, I think you misunderstood what that statement actually No, I meant. actually know what it means, but um, I, I still think that my face belongs behind a microphone. And, um, you know, if anybody wants to see my face, they can always look at the uh, the chat room or the webcam. Or, uh, you know, I'm sure there's many other ways which you can find my face. But right for, for now, it's going to be behind this microphone in the studio. Yeah, so the webcam is there at cam.freetalklive.com. And if you were listening at the tail end of last hour, we had a caller who called in to mention Roku. And the Liberty Radio Network was recently added to Roku. And I haven't looked in a few days, but with very little promotion of the fact that LRN is on Roku, we were already up over 1,200 subscribers. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, so if you have a Roku device, then you can find LRN on there. Just go to roku.lrn.fm. That's R-O-K-U dot L-R-N dot F-M. And it's and great I know that you're widening the scope of the show, too. Ian is interested in getting his own Roku because he found out that, what, you mean there's a bunch of channels I can get on this Roku that I can't get on free-to-air satellite? I, I can pick up russia today and some of these other news outlets from overseas it is very convenient so there's a lot of stuff that's available on there and there's a lot of channels that are what they call private channels meaning that you have to have some secret code to be able to find the channel what so there yeah there's a bunch of stuff that's available on roku so if you have it you can listen to lrn you don't get to see the cam feed 
But you do get to hear the show and hear all of the programming from LRN. Traitors. No, the the, the audio <laughs> only, it's a much more reliable feed than the cam is. That and the cam's only on when there's a show in this studio, which is pretty Wait, so much once a night. Is all the cam, are the cam feeds recorded and stored the same as the audio? The, this show, Free Talk Live, the video feed is stored on YouTube. Ah. But only when the show is live in studio. So the show tomorrow night, which would be Saturday and Sunday, those shows will not be on YouTube because they're not being done in studio. Mark and Ian are doing those live from Coins in the Kingdom, which I'll tell you about in just a little bit. But Ellen, you have something interesting and it's something that's been discussed on Free Talk Live before, and that is transhumanism and the morality of artificial intelligence. Yes. Tell and me more. I, I always feel kind of funny about this because I'm I, every time I'm on Free Talk Live, I feel like I'm the one that brings up artificial intelligence, and it kind of makes me seem like a nerd, but I don't really care. So I'm going to jump into this article. This is on Huffington Post dot com and uh let's see this was posted just yesterday actually so let, let me ask this question before you dig into the article are you one of the people that you want artificial intelligence so that you can then welcome your new robot overlords i i do not want an overlord i actually agree with the but author it's a robot overlord so okay. well i want i want to get into this article because the author zoltan istvan uh, actually, is a robot. Well, he wrote this article very well, and he has a unique perspective, which I actually find myself agreeing with more than any perspective that I've found beforehand. But so is he a robot? Of, we we will get into that actually. Okay. <laughs> I recently gave a speech at the Artificial Intelligence and the Singularity Conference in Oakland, California. So was, before before we get into the article, you've already said a word that a lot of people probably don't understand. What is the singularity? So the singularity is referring to a point in time where the artificial intelligence of computers and machinery reaches and exceeds that of humans. And that's just in uh, sheer capability of uh, memorizing and understanding and uh, drawing context clues and putting things together, things like that. It's kind of hard to define intelligence but basically, that's what the singularity means. Just when uh, machinery becomes as or more intelligent than humans. Okay. So there was a great line of, lineup of speakers, including AI experts Peter Voss and Monica Anderson, New York University professor Gary Marcus, sci-fi writer Nicole Salik Anderson, and futurist Scott Jackish. All of us are interested in how the creation of artificial intelligence will impact the world. My speech topic was, the morality of an artificial intelligence will be different from our human morality. Recently, entrepreneur Elon Musk made major news when he warned on Twitter that AI could potentially be more dangerous than nukes. A few days later, a journalist explained to me to his statement, and I answered, or a journalist asked me to respond to his statement, and I answered, the coming of artificial intelligence will likely be the most significant event in the history of the human species. Of course, it can go badly, as Elon Musk warned recently. However, it can just as well catapult our species to new and unimaginable transhumanist heights. Within a few months of the launch of artificial intelligence, expect nearly every science and technology book to be completely rewritten with new ideas. Better and far more complex ideas. Books Ex written by our new robot overlords because they'll then have control of the nukes because the nukes are all attached to computers. <laughs> well, that's a particularly narrow way of looking at it. I don't think that artificial, or I don't think that machines would want to necessarily kill humans. Um, especially since humans are the ones that, that built the machines. Of course, the machines will then be able to design and build themselves in the future once they reach this point. But even so, I I think that they probably have more important things to do than to use something that is fairly destructive 
such as a nuclear bomb that's also very wasteful okay, to destroy humans. Okay, and humans have a lot of more important, productive things to do than use nuclear bombs, but we know that but, they've been used on civilians. But humans are held back by emotion, and also humans are not the best at engineering. Like, yes, we, uh, we've we created such great and wonderful things as computers and nuclear bombs, but that doesn't mean that they're... They're not a uh, stone age in comparison to what these computers in the future might be designing once we reach and exceed the singularity point. Anyway, uh, the article goes on to say, expect a new era of learning and advanced life for our species. The key, of course, is not to let artificial intelligence run wild and out of sight, but to already be cyborgs and part machine ourselves so that we can plug right into wherever it leads. Then, no matter what happens, we're along for the ride. After all, we don't want to miss the singularity. And this is what I was talking about, where um, just so that humans are not completely blown over by machines in the future, we could, you know, make ourselves into, you know, cyborgs, basically. Like, we could replace parts of our body that are failing with machines. We already do things like that. People can already do that. Like, pacemakers, artificial organs. This is already happening. We just have to kind of accept it as a culture and uh, start building on this like what if what if you could um you could build something into your brain that advanced it in a certain way like maybe your your uh, neuron synapses were more efficient by like 15 percent that would be amazing right everybody could be an einstein then i i don't see that as necessarily a good thing because a bunch of intelligent people do really horrible, evil things. Well, intelligent. Well, I guess intelligence doesn't necessarily include morality. But right. if if you are uh, intelligent in in many ways and not just in one specific way, like you could be completely, like totally intelligent as far as like calculus goes. But maybe you're not as intelligent as far as philosophy goes. And you end up you designing some terrible weapon and then killing millions of people with it. That could happen. It, it seems as though, and you can correct me if I'm wrong in the next segment, but it seems as though you and the author of this article want basically evil genius. I'm Chuck <laughs> Woolery. After putting a few thousand couples together on Love Connection, you know that nothing kills romance faster than bad breath. Smart Mouth gets at the cause of bad breath without the burn. And you get clean breath for about 12 hours. Other mouthwashes only prevent bad breath for about an hour. Gum and mints, well, they just cover it up. Use Smart Mouth in the morning for great breath all day. Rinse in the evening for clean, kissable breath all night. You can even wake up without morning breath. Smart Mouth, for 12 hours of real clean breath, look for the green box at your favorite store. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power. A gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. Keenvention is coming up October 31st through November 2nd. Get your tickets now at keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, attend social events like the costume party, 
Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, James Robin Hood Cleveland, Rich Paul, and Free State Project President Carla Garrick will be keynoting. And we'll have all kinds of panels, including the new Cop Block panel and the new Movers panel hosted by the outlaw Josie Wales. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. Welcome back to Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. That's 855 855- Four five zero three seven three three. That is the Pro XPN toll free call in line. Oh yeah, and we have Skype. So if you have Skype on your computer or on even on your cell phone, if you call us using Skype, you generally sound much better. Now, when I say generally sound much better, that means as long as you're not doing a lot of uploading or downloading. And assuming that you're not on like some dial-up internet connection, you're going to sound better on Skype. That Skype username is lrn.fm. In studio tonight is Daryl. And Ellen. And Ellen, you've been telling us about the morality of artificial intelligence. And the point that I was trying to make towards the end of the last segment is that it sounds as though, especially with the author of this article saying that, well, before the singularity happens, we need to make sure that we're cyborgs. It sounds as though he really wants, like, evil genius robot overlords. Or at least he's acknowledging the fact that there might be evil genius robot overlords that build nukes and kill people. See, and that's an idea that many people have. So I understand why, you know, you would you would say something like that. But really because what he's advocating when when a scientist or somebody who comes at artificial intelligence and the singularity from a very scientific perspective, uh when when they view a situation like this, they don't see, you know, like evil genius overlord controlling everything. What they see is how this can benefit humanity and how you can turn it right. into if we just something have, positive. If we just have the right overlord, then everything will be wonderful because the problem with humans, and you had mentioned this, is the whole concept of emotions and feelings and the idea of ethics. Right, and perhaps ethics in the future— and feelings and emotions are not things that can be you know, evaluated in a— in an objective, experimental, scientific setting. Just in the fact that every person is different, perhaps, and you can never really tell what an individual person relates to one specific emotion, but people do feel similar emotions, and um, it, there there is an objective way to combine emotion and morality, and... Perhaps for uh, a robot, this might not be possible, but when we reach the singularity, I'm just going to assume that uh, 
since since these machines are just as intelligent as humans, uh, they will probably have a consciousness and uh, feelings or perhaps just, uh, you know, like shades of certain perspective that are similar to humans, although they would be more rational. And I think that maybe in the future humans are going to uh, engineer themselves in a way that is more reasonable and uh, more logical, more fitting to reality, and humans will then create their own reality. Let's talk about that a little bit more, but first we have Pete calling in from Long Beach, California, wants to talk about the difference between violence and confiscation. Pete, you're on Free Talk Live. Yeah, um, I want to talk about the... You know, I know, I know you're saying they take more and more rights away, but when are we going to stop complaining about it? And when are we going to just start, you know, shooting? When are we going to start saying, you know, either in masses of people, we're either going to, you know, lock and load, or we're going to do what Martin Luther King did with millions of people in March and say we're not going to stop marching until, you know, until you you back down and give and you know, either either we're all either. A huge chunk of us is going to get to the streets and march and say, we will overcome, and no king but King Jesus, or as many of us as asked to... Uh, well, are you going to do that? Are you to going to up. ask a bunch of people... Are, are you going to go in front of a bunch of people and say, give up your everyday lives and stand purely on principle until this is over or you die? Well, it's either that or the government's going to say, you need to give up your everyday lives and and what left the freedom you have, and you need to go by our rules or else we're going to kill you or put you in a prison slave camp. So which is worse thing, you know, do it voluntarily for what's right or do it being coerced even further for what's wrong because you 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 were too cowardly to stand up and say no to something that every walk of life. Right. Well, the Free State Project is kind of uh, an endeavor in that direction already. But, but how, is, how, is, how is New Hampshire by itself going to fix something that's beyond political? It's a moral crisis. It's the not going to, and that, and you, there's no way that you can ga- you can gather everybody of the same mindset together all in one place because they're all spread out. And how are you going to find out who agrees with you ideologically? And how are you going to ask them to give up their everyday life just so that they can they? they can you know only, basically sacrifice everything for a a standard that they have. Revenue. What's that? Our founding fathers, our founding fathers were a very small percent, but with Jesus Christ being the leader of the whole thing, that's why it happened. Because Jesus, they saw, they said we don't want any other king but King Jesus, you know, and that, that that's, that's arguable whether or not they actually said that because there's actually you know a lot of evidence pointing towards the fact that a lot of the founding fathers were actually deists and not Christians. That's a damnable lie from but, hell. The, the, on you. But Which? the question, hold on, Pete, the question that you asked at the beginning of your call was, will people either start shooting or commit acts of civil disobedience? My question to you is, which one of those two do you actually advocate? I advocate, you know, well, there, there's a time and a place for everything. If it comes to the point when they want to push the envelope even further and disarm us, and want to say, okay, if you don't like it, we're taking you to FEMA. That's when you need to shoot to kill. Because if you don't, they're going to. But unless they keep pushing it further and further and further with more Obamacare-style things to see how much more rights they can take, there's a little bit of time left for that. But I think the catalyst that's going to blow things over is the dollar tanking, supposedly. I mean, what do you, I mean, how, we need to we need to stop looking at sports and being addicted to junk, and we need to say no more. Look at my generation. I'm 26, okay? My generation's been sold down the river by hundreds and hundreds of years of people that were cowardly and impoverished and apathetic, and they didn't care. Now, I have to... And that's that's a a good piece of advice, but but when it comes down to it, like, when you're pulled over for speeding, are you going to pay the ticket, or are you going to say, no, I, I, I don't comply with this officer, and then try and speed off? Like, what would you personally do, and why? speed off either... At this point, you either fight in court or you sign uh, uh, without prejudice UCC 1 slash 308 or VC or under threat of slavery, you do that, and you cream them with UCC code right now. But there's going to come a point where they say, you need to do what we're forcing you to do, or we're going to put you in prison, and just like that. So there's going to come a point when people are like, I'm going to kill you, and that's, that's where it's coming. 
when we know for sure that we don't have any rights and we're completely totalitarian. How, how many people? We're going to kill. How many people out there in Long Beach, California, are there that think similarly to you? A lot, but see, they don't come out and they, they don't have the balls to come out and say, "No, this is it's not happening." Yeah, you know. And there Those are people, people. There are people moving to New Hampshire. To be surrounded by others that are saying we've had enough, and they're working towards that smaller not government. in a violent way, not in a violent way. Stay tuned to Free Talk Live. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over thirty years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you. There's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Are you ready to surrender your right to buy body armor? No joke. Congress is now trying to outlaw civilian body armor. And if House Bill H.R. 5344 becomes law, you can kiss your right to protect yourself against rifle bullets goodbye. Don't put off your body armor purchase any longer. Go now to InfidelBodyArmor.com. Thousands of military veterans trust their lives to Infidel Body Armor. You should too. Spelled I-N-F-I-D-E-L. Infidel Body Armor. Just won't quit. If you're looking for work, or even if you're not, here's an innocent mistake you really want to avoid. Never return calls before listening to your voicemail. Your wireless phone sends calls you didn't answer into voicemail, and it shows you phone numbers for calls you missed. Important, don't call back callers you missed until you have first listened to your messages. Otherwise, you frustrate people who bothered to leave messages by asking them to repeat a message they just left as your voicemail greeting instructed them to. If you're a job applicant, this alone could be a deal killer. And even if you're not, there are few things you can convey to someone that are as fundamentally maddening as, I didn't hear you. With money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important. For more tips for job seekers and everyone else, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live. Some old codger Republican is screaming at his radio. This is not a democracy. Yeah, it's We're a Republican, Republican democracy. We live in a republic. And to <laughs> that guy, I, just take a take take a deep breath. Tell me the operative difference between a democracy and a republic. Well, we elect representatives in a republic. That's true. And you respect a, rights. A direct democracy certainly is a democracy where everybody gets a, a, a vote. But tell me about this respecting rights thing. What other republic, in fact, respects rights? The People's Republic of China. Right. So this idea that we live in a republic is really just fallacious. It's just some term that someone's come up with. In Greek, democracy means of the people. Republic in Latin means for the people or, or something. Don't These, forget the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. That's right. a republic. Right. There's another <laughs> Republic. I mean, republics are all over. Take a pill. Republic means nothing. <laughs> Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty oriented audio content 24 hours a day at lrn.fm.
This is Free Talk Live. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. That is the Pro XPN toll-free call-in line. And, of course, there is also Skype. You can Skype into LRN.FM. And in studio tonight, it's Daryl. And Ellen. Ian and Mark are down in Florida for the Coins in the Kingdom event there in Disney. It's a Bitcoin party at the Walt Disney World Resort in Orlando, Florida. If you are in the Orlando area... Head on out to the Wyndham Lake Buena Vista in downtown Disney for Saturday, October the 4th, which is tomorrow, all the way through Monday, October the 6th. Tickets for the Coins in the Kingdom event are only $60. Hotel rooms are $99. And if you have children, if they're under the age of 12, they are free. And fun is mandatory because, after all, Private party, private contract, they can make things mandatory, and fun is mandatory. Go celebrate the magic internet money at the Magic Kingdom, coinsinthekingdom.com. So, Ellen, you have been telling us about the morality of artificial intelligence and how we're somehow going to wind up giving computers a consciousness to where they can make ethical decisions and they're not going to decide to build nuclear weapons? I I haven't jumped that far yet. I'm not making assumptions here. I'm just saying that eventually someday, and I'm not the only person, there's hundreds hundreds and thousands of people that agree with this. Okay, there's hundreds and thousands. It, It is completely inevitable the way that computer technology is advancing now that eventually machines will have the same capacity for storing information as humans do. I I think it's an assumption to say that machines will be more intelligent than humans. I I don't think that's... Just as much as I would say that it was an assumption by Al Gore in the 90s to say that the polar ice caps would have melted by the year, like, 2013 to say that as they were telling me when I was in middle school in the 80s that global cooling was going to cause a new Can ice I just age tell you why I think before that makes my me... 18th birthday I think that everything based on future hypotheticals it's assumptions that's that's true and you can't really tell exactly where the future is going to end up but let me tell you why that that makes me smile a little bit that you say that because all because the human scientists brain is, were all proven wrong. No, well, actually, um, it was scientists. That cars were, writing were science books. fiction. Cars were science fiction at one point. Nuclear submarines were science fiction. The nuclear bomb itself, going to space, telephones, computers, all of this was science fiction at one point. And right now, artificial intelligence is still science fiction. But in the future, it's going to be real. And this is why, because the human brain is okay, essentially so hold on. no. Let, the let human brain is essentially made up of millions of neurons, which are basically just uh, little little cells that can store bits of information. So, and how does a computer work? It has computer chips which right. store little bits of information. Right. So let me ask this question: Back in the eighties, scientists were saying that a new ice age was coming. In okay, the 90s, well, predicting predicting the climate is different than in predicting the, 90s, the development of it was technology. The polar ice caps are going to melt. So which is it? The polar ice caps are going to take over the world or the polar ice caps are going away? Both of those were assumptions by scientists. That's not something that humans directly design, though. Computers and machinery are. So um, if I can get back to this article, though, uh, Certainly. by Zol- Zoltan Istvan. Who may quite, or may not a be a zany. computer. <laughs> right. We don't really know we, that. We haven't sure. figured that out yet. <laughs> Naturally, as a transhumanist, I strive to be an optimist. For me, the deeper philosophical question is whether human ethics can be translated in a meaningful way into machine intelligence ethics. And I say no. Does artificial intelligence relativism exist? And if so, is it more clear than comparing apples and oranges? I'm a big fan of the human ego, and our species has no shortage of it. 
However, our anthropomorphic tendencies often go way too far and hinder us from grasping some obvious truths and realities. And I think here he's pointing out um, just the shortcomings of humans and uh, like all the reasons that lead to wars and uh, silly disputes. Okay, and there, there are some humans that say that there is no such thing as an obvious truth, that there's no way to compare an apple to an orange because you don't know that what you're seeing that is being told to you as an apple, you don't know if that's actually an apple. That might actually be a weird red chihuahua that somebody is telling you as an apple. Not if you're a you scientist. You can never know. Not if you're a scientist and you pare it down to genes and DNA and you're looking at the individual cells. Then the, you there, can tell. There are even people that say that all of that is just subjective. Right. Well, those people are wrong. And they don't have any truth. You know, you can't say you can prove nothing. And how how is that supposed to be proven true if you can prove nothing? That's just a logical fallacy. They're, they're not saying you can prove nothing. They're saying you can't prove anything. Right. Well, I'm just saying their argument is totally impotent because if you can't prove anything, then you can't even prove that statement. That's, exactly. That's as so far as it goes. Therefore, it's a factual statement because you can't prove it. Nope. I don't think so. I, I think you can prove that that's wrong by proving even one thing. But the and if, people the people that are and if you're claiming that nothing is wait. instead of objectivist, they would say that no amount of evidence is proof of anything. Well, the proof that you're even saying something says that you exist or that your consciousness exists at least, and therefore you exist, and therefore something exists, and therefore. Anything that you perceive that may be part of your reality also exists. Can, can you prove, Ellen, can you prove that we are not all just characters in the dream of some supernatural being? Uh, no, I, I can't prove that. But Okay, you, then. So you can't prove anything. That's not true. I mean, just because... From the subjective standpoint. It's very, 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 very unlikely... But I can't prove that we're not. I can't prove a negative. That's a logical fallacy as well. C continue with the article. <laughs> <laughs> the common consensus is that AI experts will aim to program concepts of humanity, love, and mammalian instincts into an artificial intelligence so it won't destroy us in some future human extinction rampage. The thinking is, if the thing is like us, why would it try to do anything to harm us? And personally, I'm hoping that this thing but is humans, more logical to think that it could it it could have an advantage, you know, keeping us around. I, I I can answer this question. His his rationale is quote, if the thing is like us, why would it try to do anything to harm us? Humans, regardless of what country they live in are very similar to every other human on the planet, but some humans wish to do other humans harm. Well, that's... So to claim that that's if not we rationality, make... though. I mean, like, the, the whole reason for violence is because people disagree, and obviously, like, if somebody's disagreeing, there's a right side and a wrong side, and somebody's wrong, and it's usually the person who wants to aggress against or, the other. as I've often seen... It's different interpretations of what is true. Right. It's not that one person's wrong and the other person's right. It's both people are equally right and equally wrong. They're just looking at the problem from two different areas. And two very narrow-minded areas. They refuse to see the other person's point of view. So to claim that... you know, if So I don't think it's mammalian instinct that needs to be had here. I think it's just... A very broad, open mind and an understanding of many different perspectives. Exactly. So I want to find out more about this artificial intelligence and how this guy thinks that, you know, if you make robots like people, they won't act like people when we come back. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. 
Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. Are you getting squeezed by the economic downturn? Hey, you were doing fine. Then, all of a sudden, you're having a tough time paying your family's credit card bills. Maybe you were downsized or even lost a job, but you still owe 10 grand or more in credit card bills. And you just can't afford the minimum payments anymore. We're here to help. We are the Genesis Debt Partners. We know the secrets to negotiate better terms with your creditors. Make a free 10-minute call right now and learn how we can help you get out of debt 800-981-7590 if you owe 10 grand or more in credit card debt and you want to learn how you can pay less and get out of debt faster call right now 800-981-7590 800-981-7590 get out of debt now 800-981-7590 The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at weusecoins.com. That's weusecoins.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Still time for you, your thoughts, your calls. 855 450 free. That's 855 855- Four five zero three seven three three. That is the Pro XPN toll free call in line, and there's also Skype. You can Skype in to username lrn.fm, and you do have to send a contact request first. That way, we can send a chat message to you to find out exactly what it is that you want to talk about when you Skype. And again, caller or the uh, toll free call in line is eight fifty five four fifty free. And Ellen, you're telling us about how robots apparently 
will maybe not actually being our overlords when they get smarter than us and they definitely won't kill people because of some mammalian instinct that does not prevent other mammals from killing one another. See, I think I think people have it wrong here and they generalize when they say things like mammalian instinct. That right, is because not... dolphins are mammals and dolphins rape each other and they have been known to do horrible things to other animals. Humans are mammals and they do horrible things to one another. Right. Every species has something that they do to their own species that's pretty terrible. Unless you're a sloth, and then you really can't do anything. But... Uh... <laughs> But I, but I don't think uh, it's the mammalian instinct. Moss which, will grow on you if you're a sloth. Yeah, I, I'm sure they move slow enough. I yeah. believe it. But uh, the thinking is not. It's not about mammalian instincts. It's not about nursing. It's not about like being motherly and coddling. It's more so about understanding and it, like understanding somebody else's perspective and respecting the right to exist and. You can kind of compare it to how humans view other animals, like dogs or cows or deer. You know, anything that's a lower life form, as we tend to think of it. And, um, you know, we're still merciful. I, I mean, there's plenty of people who uh, advocate for human or er, for uh, animal rights so, and, you know, for the coexistence. I, I and just... I think it does benefit everyone. I think it's a wise decision. And I think the uh, artificial intelligence in, in the future will kind of look on us the same way that we look on lower life forms. So I just had this thought, and I know it's been discussed on the show in the past about the whole idea of sex robots being created. Yeah. And here's my question is in the future, if you know these sex robots wind up getting artificial intelligence to where they're as intelligent as people, then they won't just be sex robots anymore. Then well, would it then be prostitution to have sex with a sex robot for money? Well, maybe, but I think you're missing the bigger picture, which is that if sex robots eventually grow a consciousness, then would it be, you know, morally right to, you know, have something like a prostitute around where this thing's got feelings. This thing has a brain of its own. This thing could be out living its life and being an engineer somewhere. But instead, maybe it's it wasn't stuck in your programmed room. to be an engineer. Maybe it was only programmed to be a sex robot. Well, then how could it gain further intelligence? How does any machine gain further intelligence when By it's being programmed redesigned. to do a certain job? Like the welding robot in the GM factory isn't all of a sudden going to be a barber robot. Like that's not how things happen. But this is a call-in show, and we've got Tony in Butte, Montana, that wants to talk about transhumanist and transhumanism. Tony, you're on Free Talk Live. How's it going? Good. What's on your mind? Good. good. Well, you know, I, I just think that we're, we're talking about artificial intelligence and, and robots with feelings. It, it just seems that, uh, you know, there's got to be a human overlooking those feelings and stuff imparted into these robotic beings. And, you know, you hear of, of the, the super elite and the super rich uh, going to be immortal through, uh, you know, new technologies. And, well, eventually and it won't just be to, restricted to the rich. It'll be for everyone. I, I think once we have this artificial intelligence of sorts, though, it isn't uh, the human race kind of, going to be a thing of the past you know i mean it seems right now that the, the elite are, are, are cultivating a society where they only need a certain population they only need you know uh certain amounts of people to to control you know and this this new artificial intelligence these, these you know robots write books and this and that it, it just seems you know i mean how dumb are we are, are we going to let the super rich and the super elite and people just take us over and you know i mean there's more to being a human than you know just being controlled and i, I just i see a lot of control in this artificial intelligence you know uh, uh, just well artificial intelligence now. it's um it depends on the individual but i don't think the purpose of creating something like this is to control other people it's to have more control over yourself and to control how long you live, the quality of your life, what you can accomplish. 
that that sort of thing. Yeah. Well, I just, it just seems this 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 new this new way we're heading. It seems like our days are are coming really close to you know not not being perpetuated for forever through through new medical sciences. You know, you got Ebola and this and that that they were telling us wasn't even going to be airborne and it wasn't going to be in the U.S. and we didn't have nothing to worry about. And, you know, you're seeing that pop up all the time and, and stuff like that. I don't mean to get off subject here, but it seems like the people that want to create artificial intelligence are relying on our uh, lack of intelligence to, you know, kind of bring that forward of, you know, look at how neat and handy this is. And I think it's going to be our ultimate demise, you know. Well, I, yeah, I think that if we're not, you know, if, if there are individuals who are not, you know, up to speed on it, then maybe they'll be left behind. But as long as you're intelligent and diligent in your own life, then you'll, you know, keep up with the the artificial intelligence. You'll probably, you know, know what steps to take in order to not be totally taken over by it. You know, it's not right. it's not like when the Internet came out, there was millions of people that ended up dying because of it or, you know, people who were becoming enslaved by it. It set people free. It enriched people's lives. True, but when the I internet agree. first came out, I do remember hearing news stories about people that were addicted to the internet and that the internet was controlling their lives. Right, to and some you hear extent. about people being addicted to their cell phones and their smartphones now. It's the same thing. Of course, there's fear, there's generalized, widespread fear about every new technology, but that's just missing the point of it. Tony, anything else? Uh, you know, I just want to say one thing. Uh, I, I've been a type 1 diabetic since uh, 1991. And in 1991, they were talking about, uh, they were working on a cure. They were just right at the door of it. You know, they had the pork isolates, and they were going to be able to fix the human pancreas. Okay. Now, since then, it seems like, where did that idea go? You know, and, and with with all this, this, you know, you can get a pacemaker, you can... You can artificial this and that what have you and i haven't seen a, a robotic pancreas yet I, you know that would be a uh, pretty intelligent I, I yeah that, so. there, there's a lot of <laughs> medical uh, advances that could be had out of technology i just don't know if they have the funding for it well if they've well, got funding they gotta... to you know make bombs and kill people they can find funding to make a robotic pancreas tony thanks for the call Ellen, we've only got about a minute and a half left. Can you go over the three rules of transhumanism real quick, or the three laws? Uh, yes. I, as far as I see, they, they're pretty much the same as Isaac Asimov's three laws of robotics. A transhumanist must safeguard one's own existence above all else. Okay. A transhumanist must strive to achieve achieve omnipotence as expediently as possible so long as one's actions do not conflict with the first law omnipotence means total knowledge correct yes as expediently as possible so long as um you do not impede on your own existence and a transhumanist must safeguard value in the universe so long as one's actions do not conflict with the first and second laws and um i i think maybe he needs to define value a little bit more but um, he does make a reference earlier in the article, which is uh, something I wanted to reference just before uh, the end of the segment, just so that people get a better understanding. Yeah, certainly. Hit that uh, real quick. But is it even possible to program such concepts into a machine? I tend to agree with Howard Rourke in Ayn Rand's The Fountainhead when he says, What can be done with one substance must never be done with another. No two materials are alike. In short, getting artificial intelligence to think is not the same as getting the gray matter we all carry around to think. It's a different material with a very compos very different composition and purpose, and our values and ideals will likely not work very well for it. So we need to define value more clearly in the future. Certainly, and the transhumanist law says nothing about a transhumanist killing someone else's existence. Defend value. Listen to Free Talk Live tomorrow, Ian and Mark or live in Orlando online in the meantime, freetalklive.com. Have you 
Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP 